mingle with Christian nationalism, Tony? Uh, is the kingdom of God perpetuated through uh, the political systems of this world? I mean, what, what do you think, Tony? Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph, for letting uh, me be a part today. And uh, Dr. Brown, thank you for your insightful stuff that obviously helps us greatly. It's great to be with my colleagues today. Let me just share this. As a, as a political science major in undergrad school, uh, that was something that was a part of my life. Uh, I was raised in D.C. That was my home growing up. And so being around the Capitol was a part of just a, my, a fiber of being for so many years. And when God put me in ministry, obviously he called me out of that stream in a different way. But here's what I know. There's four things I think that are specific about America that need to be, you know, our hermeneutic matters, how we interpret thing, things matter. And I think one of the things that we're being challenged over in this moment is that we have had sometimes a faulty hermeneutic on how we actually even looked at scripture and looked at the Bible. First of all, America's a nation, right? Acts 17, God sets the boundaries of nations. He sets and raises up nations. Uh, I believe that there's some things about our nation that's been good. There's some things about our nation that's been bad. We have a history. It's impacted the world. And we can freely talk about the good or the bad of our nation. You got you to own it all, right? It's good and bad. There's things we've done well, and there's things we've not done well. And some of that's come back to haunt us even this year in 2020. We, we're facing things that have been long-term issues in our nation that we've continued to uh, kick down the road rather than really actually deal with. Second of all, I think America's a culture. Uh, I've preached in 80 nations of the world, traveled all over the world in every kind of, almost kind of nation you can be in. And I realized that America is a culture. When, you, when people say certain things, they say, well, that's American. That's part of your culture. It's a mixed bag. It has uh, some beautiful ideals and values that it's blessed the world with. I think um, in a lot of ways, it's, we've been a, a blessing. I'm grateful to God for those. But how many of you know that America's also propagated some of the worst evil in the world that's come out of our culture um, because we've condoned it and allowed it. But here's the two things that trouble me most, Joseph, is thirdly, America is an empire. And by being an empire, we're a superpower nation who believes that we have manifest destiny, like you were just talking about, that somehow God has uh, use, wants to use us, like the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the British Empire. Now, the American Empire is supposed to shape history. And the problem is God opposes empires uh, because he designates that role, as far as I see scripture, he designates the role of that to his son. Psalms chapter 2, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance that he can shape the history of those things. I don't think that America was born to shape the history of the world. I think we are a part of his story. And fourthly, uh, America or Americanism has become a religion. And when it becomes a religion, it's, it's uh, uh, sacrosanct, it becomes then idolatrous. Because what happens is we make it uh, our love of country almost equal to our love of God. And so therefore we celebrate uh, our national things as if they were kingdom things. I don't think it's wrong to be patriotic. I think it's wrong to put what you are as a nation on the same level of your affection and love for God. I mean, there are people that have even talked about the fact that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights was divinely inspired. So it makes it equal to the Bible. If, if, if that's true, then we're, we're all in trouble, right? John Wesley made this statement in his sermon, The Mystery of Iniquities, that he preached 250 years ago, 200 years ago. John Wesley said this. He said that for the first three centuries, the church never was wounded by persecution. It, it survived and grew and thrived, even in the midst of being very heavily persecuted. But the greatest wound that was ever issued to the church, in his estimation, in his sermon, he said, was in the fourth century when Constantine mixed the state with the church. And he gave the church riches, he gave it honor, he gave it power, and he gave it prestige and status. And by giving the church that, it wounded it in such a way, and here's his quote, he said, at that moment, the mystery of iniquity was no longer in hiding. It came out full force in front of the whole world like the noonday sun. 
And I think when you mix state, politics, and religion together, in, even in Christianity, it, I'm going to be very bold. In some ways, what some people are talking about is no different than the Taliban in Afghanistan. They want a, ta they want a religious state that rules everybody according to their value system. We in America want a religious state ruled by our value system. That's not how our God operates. So I believe that we have to come back to a place where we recognize that the church was not meant to, to fight for the seats of power. I believe we were meant to be salt and light. We were meant to influence the earth by the value system of the kingdom of God. Christendom to me is a false ideology. Christianity is a, a, a belief system in Christ and who he is. Christendom is either the product of Constantine and the things that came out of that whole era where we missed, mixed Christianity with all of the politics of, of even then later on into Europe. So in my estimation, uh, Dr. Matera, uh, the church has been walking a, on thin ice and we finally broke through. And we're, we're reaping the, the hermeneutic that we've declared over the last 40, 50 years in some ways. And uh, we've got to come back to really seeing ourselves, I think, in the eyes of the kingdom through the word of God.